Good evening and thank you for joining us on Core TV News at 7. I am Ebulomo Adekunle. Nigeria has recorded a new Ebola case to bring the number of confirmed cases in the country to 19. Health Minister Onyebuchi Chuku disclosed this at a press briefing in Abuja. He revealed that the new case is the fiancé of one of the primary contacts of the index case, but added that he has recovered. The political engine room of Lagos State has again been ignited as the former Accountant General of the state, Akimumi Ambodi, formally declared his intention to contest the 2015 governorship election. Thousands of APC supporters thronged the Bagada campaign office of the candidate to register their support for his ambition. Olaju Mokyo Latunji was there and filed in this report. Lagos is the commercial nerve center of the country. The one that every sector of the Nigerian society, ranging from religious to commercial and traditional institutions, are keenly interested in who emerges as the chief executive of the state. Before now, speculations were rife in the Lagos political arena that the former council general of the state, Akiomi Ambadi, is the candidate whom the party's leadership has endorsed to lead the state after the incumbent Babatunde Fashola vacates the seat in 2015. However, this remained a grapevine until this formal declaration by Ambadi. We are here because we just want to show you a common location where the aspiration and the future of Lagos is evolving. And this is where we are. We've had a lot of legacy groups and they've been bearing different names. But what we have done now is to bring everybody together in the manner that we have a structured organization that can drive our campaign. It's not as safe, we have declared, but these are supporters, these are friends, these are party members who believe that the future of Lagos State should be in our hands. And that's the aspiration we, we tend to seek right now. Since the recent declaration by the Oba of Lagos, Ruwan Akiolu, that he will be the next governor of Lagos, Akiomi Ambade has had to contend with a superior challenges ranging from religious consideration to organized zoning, his partially in age and lately alleged funding of his campaign through the councils in the state. This might look like a step in the right direction for this man who's finally come out to give answers to so many questions concerning his political ambitions. As a look, the race allows that 2015 has finally begun and political disputes have started to relate their intentions through banners and posters on the streets of Lagos. Now, Lagosians are earnestly waiting to see who will succeed by the Raji Fashula as governor of Lagos State from 2015 general elections. Olatwoke Olatunji, Court TV News, Lagos. Chiefs of Defense Staff of West African State are converging on Ghana to review the general security situation in the region. The meeting carries the theme strengthening ECOWAS military cooperation for peace, stability and development. The regional defense chiefs are to receive an update on the security situation in northern Nigeria where Boko Haram has seized some towns and declared an Islamic caliphate. They will also introduce, they will also during their three-day talks be briefed on the Ebola virus disease outbreak in West Africa, which ECOWAS has tagged a security threat. In addition, the meeting will also consider the status report on the ECOWAS standby force as well as receive updates on the new Peace Support Operation Division. As the battle for the soul of northeast Niger villages rages between government forces and Boko Haram insurgents, political analysts have continued to lay the attacks at the doorstep of politicians who they say will do anything to gain power. Speaking on our flagship program, Core Digest, Dikpo Olayo concise, the Nigeria army has failed in the responsibility of ensuring that insurgents are contained that Nigerian army will make what they call tactical maneuver into Cameroon, fighting Boko Haram, not fighting America, not fighting Ghana, fighting Boko Haram. When the, when the firepower was too much of our boys, when they made what they call tactical maneuver into another country, that is strange that those people now arrested them, disarmed them, go and lodge them in one school. 
Nigeria should be ashamed of ourselves. When we remember Nigeria of yesteryears. I was telling you what was happening when Nigeria invaded Cameroon because they strayed into our territory. That the, the Cameroonian president had to call the French president to call our president that please call Buhari to order. Nigeria military has now become a, a, a bunch of people that would not, 480 men Nigerian army soldiers ran into Cameroon because they were faced with firepower that was above their, more than their own. And we have a country that was budgeting close to a trillion naira every day, every year for defense. Political affairs analyst Charles A.K. explains that political leaders are responsible for the attack as they have abandoned their primary responsibility of protecting lives and property. Instead of being responsive and responsible to the mandate that you, that the leaders have gotten on the path of gold, now they abdicated their responsibility, allowed almageries to come in and take charge of the whole environment, making them to grow from infancy to these monstrous uh, terror groups that are now a challenge to the, the entire, not, not just Nigeria alone, to the whole world. It's the Court TV News at 7. We'll take a break and we'll be back with more stories. Don't go away. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes and bleeding from the eyes, ears and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Many thanks for being there. A group of Muslim professionals known as the Companion has called on all Nigerians and Muslims alike to come together to fight the activities of the Boko Haram sect. The call was made at its annual gathering. The activities of the group has been described as having no basis in Islam, the report. The group known as the Companion says the activities of the Boko Haram sect has no basis in Islam calling on all Nigerians to stand up and be counted in the move to put a stop to its violent activities. The national president, Musbaudin Oyefeso, says activities of the group have shown that it is un-Islamic. Practically and declaratively, they are not Muslims. Because if they are Muslims, they will not be killing co-Muslims, number one. Number two, they will not even be destroying properties of Muslims, and they will not even be operating in a land where you have very huge Muslim population. So they can never be Muslims and they are not Muslims. Secondly, Islam abhors violence in any form. We have just been exposed to exceptions to um, violence or situations where Muslims can defend themselves, not even unleash violence on anybody for any reason. Lagos State Amir of the group Majim Yusuf says though groups such as Boko Haram and the Islamic State are Muslims by birth, but they are a misguided bunch of people who have twisted the tenets of Islam to further their selfish and violent desires. Both groups, Boko Haram and ISIS, I mean, made up of Muslims, no doubt, uh, would appear to be made up of misguided Muslims. Uh, they are they transgress the limits set by Allah and uh, acceptable to Islam and uh, their activities are generally un-Islamic and uh, for that reason I join other Muslims in condemning the activities of the ISIS and Boko Haram. The group rose from its meeting with a resolve to continue to educate Muslims on the activities of groups like Boko Haram and Islamic State as un-Islamic and one they should fight. 
As part of efforts to keep the Nigerian Navy in shape, Western Naval Command has organized a three-day small arms firing exercise for officers and ratings. Omotayo Law was at the Nigeria Army shooting range where the exercise took place and filed in this report. Not just observing, but having a feel of what it means to eat the targets by the naval officers. The three-day small arms firing exercise is aimed at improving the weapon handling skills of personnel and developing intuitive response to the initiative on the battle conditions. The exercise witnessed a lot of impressive performance as officers proved their worth in eating targets from afar. At the closing ceremony, the first demonstration was the helicopter shooting exercise. Then officers on the training showcased what they have learned in the past three days. The special guest of honor, Director General Nimasa, represented by his deputy, Sunday Umorin, expressed satisfaction at the command's training skills aimed at preparing them for eventuality. As reported, it's, it's been quite a, a success in, in terms of uh, the degree of accuracy and show of professionalism. So it's, it's a clear indication that we can all go home and be sleeping, knowing that the good guys are doing the good job for us. Declaring the command's determination to continue in the spirit of marksmanship, the flag officer command and Western Naval Command, Sami Alade, represented by the command chief staff officer, Etim Etifit, says he's confident of an excellent performance if the command has called for external competition of small arms handling skills. I'm sure we've always been ready and will always be ready. And from what we have all witnessed today, there's no doubt that the Navy is on top of its job and we are ever ready. The small arms fire exercise is one of the most important events in the Nigerian Navy calendar, usually organized annually across the Federation. Prevention, they say, is better than cure. Right at the Nigerian Army shooting range over the Ogun State, the Nigerian Navy Western Commander once again showed and exhibited the importance of training and preparedness towards attacking and fighting the enemies of the Nigerian waters. Omotayu Alo, Core TV News, Ogun State. Nigeria's aviation authorities have ordered a total review of the security system at all airports across the country. Minister of Aviation Osita Chidoka disclosed this during an on-the-spot assessment of ongoing construction work at the Abuja airport. The minister maintained that his focus is to ensure safety in the air and security of passengers. Pius Samuel reports. For some time now, airports across the country have been upgraded to enhance passengers' convenience and safety. But government is still not satisfied with the safety and security system in place around the airports. Now, Aviation Minister Osita Chidoka is determined to put a stop to what he considers as security lapses. He is prepared to channel available resources towards ensuring the safety of Nigeria's airspace. And the safety uh, of um, air freight and passengers. So we're talking to airline operators, we're talking to NCAA inspectors, and we're making sure that um, we focus greatly on the safety of, pass of, of our airspace. During the inspection, the minister was satisfied with the level of work that is ongoing. Um, I've also tried to see that my predecessor has done very well in the terminal remodeling and the building um, so there is no new thing to add there. All we need to do is to focus and complete the work that has already started. Passengers in recent times have had cause to complain over what they describe as slow pace of work at the airport. But the minister was quick to announce when the Abuja terminal will be fully ready for use. The work is going on well, but there is a lot of disruption to passenger operations. So part of our... Um, strategy will be to communicate more with the passengers to let them know that these are temporary inconveniences. Uh, within now and the next um, four to six months, we hope to get the full terminal up and running in the domestic area. Uh, so the walkthrough and the suffering that the passengers are going through uh, will be a thing of the past. Before now, Nigeria has had its fair share of air mishaps, but with the current upgrade of the security and air safety system, the authorities are convinced that the country will regain its Category 1 air safety certification. Pius Samuel, Core TV News, Abuja. 
The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has declared a gubernatorial aspirant in Bauchi State, Abdullahi Usman Adamu, alias Dan China, wanted. The politician is wanted by the Antigraft Agency for allegedly obtaining 500,000 US dollars from a Chinese company by false pretense. The FCC says that the suspect obtained the money from the Chinese firm as part of as part payment for the supply of 3,000 metric tons of lead ore, but failed to deliver on the contract. The commission later invited him based on a petition from the Chinese embassy, but he failed to honor the invitation. The suspect is currently on the run as efforts to track him, including several visits to his home in Narabi, Bochi, proved futile. In another development, the Antigraft Agency has also declared one God's will Oyegua Oyoyo, an information technology staff of a new generation bank, wanted over a case of multi-billion fraud case. God's will allegedly conspired with some scammers and obtained 6.2 billion naira from his bank after hacking into the bank's database. The 38-year-old is from Isuku's south local government area of Delta State. An educationist school man Ajiboye says is not comfortable with government's decision to tinker with the resumption of schools over Ebola virus. It told Core TV News in Abuja that government officials should be considering extending Ebola sensitization programs to schools. Extending the, uh, the resumption of uh, students, I don't think it has a uh, a serious uh, meaning to uh, eradication or prevention of Ebola. There is no school that is as crowded, for example, as a Wuse market or Maraba market. Why is it that markets are not closed? So it is even from the engine room where we can get knowledge on how to eradicate Ebola that you are closing down. So you are shutting down the knowledge, not preventing a escalation of a Ebola. Therefore, to me personally, you only, you are going to put uh, uh, the students into a serious, or a kind of a, uh, aggression in their studies because they have to meet up with uh, finishing their syllabus. I think uh, universities or tertiary institutions, they are in session. So what is the difference? What is the po population of uh, students in the universities, polytechnics, and that of secondary schools and primary schools? So what is it that government is really preventing? We'll take another pro break on Core TV News at 7 and we'll be back with stories outside Nigeria. Don't go away. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world? Again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Amnesty International has called on Ukraine's leaders to act against abuses and war crimes committed by volunteer militias fighting against pro-Russian rebels in the east of the country. The rights group says it had documented a growing number of abuses, including abductions, unlawful detention, ill treatment, robbery, extortion, and possible executions by one pro-Kiev battalion fighting in the Lugiansk area. Prime Minister Asani Yatsenyuk, who met Amnesty Chief Salil Shadi during his visit to Kiev, pledged that the government would hold those responsible to account, stressing that all perpetrators of crimes are equal before the law and liable to prosecution. The national conflict 
and that it is very clear to us that Russia is a party to the conflict. For, for many weeks and months now, we have been documenting the humanitarian law violations which have been caused by uh, the separatist forces. But what we've said to the Prime Minister today is that we've also received reports of humanitarian law violations by the Ukrainian forces, like indiscriminate shelling and reports like that. And these issues are very complex. The important thing for the Ukrainian government to do at this point is to immediately investigate. The reason is to end human suffering because the human suffering in Luhansk, because of the behavior of the Ida Battalion, is very clear when you read our report. You can see what human costs it has. And that's it on Core TV News at 7. Join me again on the Primetime News at 9.45. Thank you for watching. I am Ebulomo Adekunli.